This is Talk with Audrey. Welcome back. During the cold and flu season, it can be challenging for people with lung disease to know the true culprit of their respiratory symptoms. Signs like coughing, fatigue, and shortness of breath could also be a sign of Microbacterium avium complex. It's also called MAC lung disease, and it's a condition that often goes undiagnosed for years. Joining me to talk about it, Dr. Gwen Hewitt, an infectious disease physician at National Jewish Health, and we're gonna talk about the symptoms, how it's diagnosed and treated. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me on your show today. Appreciate it. What is MAC lung disease and uh, what are the symptoms? Well, MAC lung disease is a constellation of symptoms that you, you just alluded to. So cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, and usually sputum production. And this is caused by a germ that we're all exposed to all the time called Mycobacterium avium complex. And this germ loves to hang out in water sources and soil sources. So shower heads, steam from tubs or, or baths or garden soil or potting soil are uh, put out into the air and then we inhale them. Most of us will never have any problems with this whatsoever, but certain groups that have vulnerable lungs may be vulnerable to these germs setting up shop in the lungs and causing progressive lung damage. So it's really important that we identify it early because we can embark on treatment early and make you feel much, much better. Who's at risk for MAC lung disease? Right, well, certainly we know uh, several populations like people that have underlying COPD or chronic obstructive lung disease, asthma, bronchiectasis, uh, are probably more vulnerable. We also have identified that women seem to be more vulnerable to this infection, as well as people over the age of 65. So these are the, the groups that we mainly look at. And again, this, this isn't something that a cough is present for a week. This is uh, in someone who's uh, had a persistent cough for usually several weeks. And we wanna be sure that you mention this to your primary care physician. So they start checking your sputum to see if it, the germ indeed is in your lungs, maybe get some x-rays or CAT scans, because if the germ is growing in your lungs, you'll then likely be referred to a pulmonologist or lung doctor or an infectious disease physician like myself to go through the, the treatment, which usually involves about three antibiotics for sometime around a year. Wow, you mentioned that the steam from the shower head or potting soil? Wow, it sounds to me like we need to be cleaning our shower heads. Do we also need to wear a mask for everything these days? Well, no, we don't, we don't recommend that you wear a mask in, in the shower. The, these germs are in all of our water lines, everywhere uh, in the United States and in the world, quite honestly. Uh, these form uh, little colonies, uh, little communities in our piping system. And then when they get aerosolized, uh, we think that may be one, one way that you uh, get these bacteria in your lungs. Or if dirt gets aerosolized in a big wind or uh, things of that nature, and they repeatedly find their way into your lungs, they can find a, a happy home in your lungs and set up shop. What are the treatment options? Right. So if we grow the germ in the laboratory, your uh, lung doctor or infectious disease doctor will usually suggest three different uh, antibiotics. But in addition to the antibiotics, we really focus on the whole body. So it's really important to focus on nutrition to make sure that you're getting adequate, adequate nutrition because we know the immune system functions most appropriately if your immune system is working properly. We also teach you how to exercise in the best fashion. We teach you how to keep your breathing tubes cleaned out appropriately so the germ doesn't have a good haven to continue to grow in. Uh, and then your doctor is going to do some ongoing testing, usually seeing you every month or so in clinic to do some sputum tests and maybe some x-rays and, and just see how you're doing. And what's the normal course of treatment? Right. Usually with three different uh, antibiotics that are pills as a starting place. And that's, uh, that's why your doctor will monitor your sputums monthly. And uh, if it looks like you're not responding after six months or so, they may decide to, to change course just uh, slightly, but that'll be dependent on cultures and how you're feeling. 
And in addition to what doctors know about treating, it's important, it's so important that we empower our patients to learn more about this disease process because I think a lot of people feel like they want to be partners with their doctor. So I'd really recommend that patients, if you think you have this or you know you have it, you go to MacLungDiseaseInfo.com or the NTM treatment guidelines on the web and start educating yourself so that you empower yourself with questions to ask your doctor and make sure you're on the right path to wellness and treatment for this infection. And do most people respond to this treatment? In my experience, virtually all patients will respond to this treatment, fortunately. And it, that's why it's really important to, to identify this germ early so we catch this infection early because if it smolders for months to years, that will cause some damage to your lungs that will certainly make it harder to treat and maybe make you less likely to respond to antibiotics in the treatment course that we set out for you. So early diagnosis is, is huge. And where can we go, Dr. Hewitt, for some more information? So once again, I would encourage people to go to MacLungDiseaseInfo.com uh, to get more information about this uh, disease process. My guest has been Dr. Gwen Hewitt. She's an infectious disease physician at National Jewish Health. We've been talking about Mac lung disease, the signs, symptoms, and the importance of getting treated if you're at risk. Thanks so much for joining me, Dr. Hewitt. Thank you very much.